CXC. I'm uh, Matt Fraction from uh, Portland, Oregon, uh, and uh, uh, with me uh, today, Tella virtually, are uh, Gabrielle Moon, Gabriel Ba, and Fabio Moon. I think that's your names, right? I got those right. Uh, who are twins, but don't have the same name. Um, uh, uh, Gabriel, Fabio. Uh, first off, we've all clearly been making some choices in quarantine, uh, and I would like to talk about those choices now. Um, uh, Gabriel, let's start with you. Uh, the Mohawk. How's it go? Uh, it, it's great, actually. Uh, it's a lot of work, a lot of work. Maintenance, high maintenance, yes. And you can't do it on your own. Hmm. You can shave your full head on your own, but Mohawk, you need help, especially sure. when you're in the back, you're, you're working blind, right? Yes, but uh, it works great. Wife loves it, and uh, I'm feeling great. That's, even that's though it's winter, it. even though you're having kind of winter weather, it is still, it's okay. It's not the, not the temperature yeah. wise, you're doing all right. No, it's, it's terrible. You have to wear a, you know, a cap and uh, your, your full head is exposed, but sure. Uh, vanity, right? Yeah, sure. That's sure. What that's what counts. So, yeah. but we've, you know, it's, it's, it's Brazil winter. It's just a word. Uh, we had some very cold days here in Sao Paulo, but they're gone now, hopefully. So we have a nice now, day. Uh, 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 Fabio, you, uh, you also have made some choices here uh, uh, with just a great big Super Mario mustache. Uh, let's talk about that. Let's talk about what brought you to this point. Yeah, well, it's, it's funny that you mentioned that the Super Mario um, comparison because uh, we always used to joke that we had a third twin who were locked on the basement and he was the one doing all the heavy lifting. He was the one doing the work. And Mario Boone, so the third twin, Mario Boone, of course. Yeah, and we used to call the third twin Mario. And so I, I wanted to do some physical change and we went, I, 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 I tried the mustache. I tried shaking my head at first, but then afterwards I decided to just uh, try the mustache would because it would definitely look weird. It's like ah, how's how's the most weird I can look is with the mustache. It's the most out of place, most unnatural look that I've ever done. And sure. so now I look this. I look like the porno version of what I've always looked, which uh, seem appropriate uh, uh fabio moons plural uh uh so but just to confirm then there is not fabio is not in fact chained in into in a basement somewhere slaving away on a project you are not mario boone you are fabio. <laughs> okay well we'll never know that's true <laughs> yeah, right i also can't help but notice i'm the only one wearing wearing a mask um uh, and i thought uh masks mask were mandatory but uh uh okay uh i'll uh, i'll take that um so uh, uh, talking about kind of uh, uh, making choices, wanting to make bold, bold choices, I guess I, I kind of prepared questions chronologically, but you know, time doesn't mean anything anymore. Um, and Fabio, while you're up on the screen here, what's, uh, uh, tell me about the quarantine diaries that you've been working on. Uh, that was initially, that was uh, an invitation from a Brazilian publisher to try to engage the audience in the beginning of quarantine into staying at home and having something that they could uh, see and relate really clearly. And that was also for me something that I liked uh, to have some way to communicate stuff 
with the audience very quickly, uh, unlike every other kind of comics that we do, which take years to get ready and get out into the world. So that, that, that speed of doing something weekly that two days later would be online everywhere and people would read, that was very refreshing and, and relaxing to put my anxieties out. Sure. And, and I don't know, it's, it's, it's a way to keep track of time in days which seem, all, all, every to... day looks like the same day right. and nothing changes. For, for, for months, the weather didn't change uh, where we were. So it was nice to, to have, oh wait, I'm, I'm on week two. I, I, was, I was not counting the days, but it helped me count the weeks. I'm um, week two, I'm doing week three, I'm working on week four, I'm doing week five. This was the first month, this was the second month. So it, it, it gave something that I can't, it, it, helps, it helped me go back and forth into this big uh, amount of time, which looks like the same and see, okay, so two months into the quarantine, that were my worries and that's what I was doing and how many birthdays have passed throughout this time period, how many Zoom meetings we had, uh, how, many, how many TV series we got mm -hmm weird about seeing people without masks and seeing people too close to each other. So every, I started to see that the, this new way of living started to spread throughout every daily thing that we did. Yeah. And, and we started to stress out about every single little thing that we did. And doing the stories, it made me realize that it, it's it's happening to everybody right. and, and so it, it makes me feel less alone and I think it makes people feel less alone when they see that everybody's in the same place. Yeah. If, we're, if we're all in the same place emotionally, uh, it helps to deal with the fact that we're all in different places, locked out uh, and isolated, I feel. It's been fascinating to me to see how you've been kind of developing your own kind of visual language, how the bunnies have become regular, you know, sort of in different representations of masks and, and, and uh, 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 renderings of the virus itself. Yeah. Uh, um, that's been fascinating over the, over the period of, of, of uh, 487 weeks now uh, uh, to see that develop and, and come out. Do you have any particular objective or destination or you're just going until it's done and each week is its own kind of thing yeah yeah well i i think the the original idea was to go and work until it was done but but then by the end of the second month the publisher was kind of uh, tired <laughs> And but but I, I felt like going. Uh, there, 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 were, there, like weren't enough, there weren't enough fight scenes. I don't know. They, it was it was like a, at at the publisher. It was a bigger pop project. So there was a cartoonist with me. There was like a bunch of serious writers, literary writers, and poets, and they are all shipping in, doing their own diaries, hmm. and by the end of the second month the publisher said okay we had enough people don't care about this anymore but in my mind i felt like i was working to create a, a portrait of what it was like yeah. from beginning to end so i i decided to keep going because it clearly hadn't changed anything by the end of the second month right. and i still think it's it's not over and it still keeps changing, and I still keep uh, noticing new things and uh, having new realizations of how people are dealing with the virus and how people are dealing with daily life and how they are trying. Everybody's having to reimagine life so they can live life 
because everybody's tired of not not doing anything and waiting right so we we it's been weird uh, trying to analyze and and fictionalize how people are having to deal with okay so now life's going to be completely different but i still have to go and live it so right. what can i do to make my life a better experience for me because just waiting is not enough of, a, of an experience anymore so right. people people are all trying to come out with new solutions and different ways to make every day count and to make every day different and it's it, kind it, of, it can be inspiring yeah I, it's, it's very telling to me that the person in the position of authority uh, uh, decided at the end of two months they had had enough of it uh, because they think that's part of the reason that we're still in this mess is everyone made it about there's this belief of like we did two months and that's enough now we're now we're through and it's it's totally not the case and now uh ba you uh just decided that uh, uh your audience your readers could just go fuck themselves and you didn't care about reaching out to them through this right so you've not been doing a diary project no because you hate the readers or you hate comics um uh, both no I, <laughs> I hate the readers because they read comics um, oh no. oh interesting yeah no um uh, it's just I don't know. Uh, it's very. It can't be very uh, demanding. Sure. Well, uh, one of the, I we we're all the 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 three of us are about. I think I'm like eight days older than you. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, you're kind of I little so. month. And end of May. You you. No, you're you're in December, right? Yeah, we're yeah. In June. We're, Okay, so but we're okay. So, all right, okay. Uh, we're very close, though. Uh, and Adrian, yeah. I know, uh, Ba, you have a two-year-old, uh, yes. and yes. that changes everything. That changes um, everything. Yeah, it, it changed two years ago, and has changed ever since. And in this scenario, changes everything. Changes everything. Um, so she is my my quarantine diary. Uh, right. You know, I put all my energy when I'm not drawing comics on on raising her, and and that's what I did. Like for the first three or four months, I couldn't really get back to work when this right. when we went into lockdown because we were at home all the time, having to you know give a hundred percent of our attention to our daughter so yeah. um, kids kids that age are, are not yeah are very hands-on and uh, uh uh maybe you get 40 minutes out of a nap but um uh, we, yeah. we we talked our, our sort of families spoke a couple hundred years ago it's all i can't remember how long it was but it was interesting that, that we we talked about you trying to find the place in your house that you could set up to work but even then it's all such a permeable membrane because out, out comes Anna and like you know, oh okay and now you're sitting on daddy's lap and maybe drawing isn't happening and stuff like that yeah, um, yeah. Ev eventually I had to start leaving the house again and coming to the studio so every once in a while Fabio and I are here together wearing a mask and working together because I can't really work from home. And sure. uh, it's not only a physical matter, but also the mindset. And I don't really want to work from right. home. I've, That's the other it, thing that's really hard to explain to people is like, no, no, you're, you're, my kids are way better than work. <laughs> yeah, they are. They are. And, you know, <laughs> it's way more fun. Yeah, and she's, she's way better than everything. Like she's in this stage where she learns how to speak uh, so much in in a month and then two months and now and you know she remembers she mentions things that happened like a year ago when she didn't speak yeah it's crazy right remember, it's crazy it's crazy so you know put that next to work or next to crazy world upside down of course i want to stay home and be with my daughter so 
that's my quarantine journal. Uh, but we, we are back to work. I'm back to work slowly getting into, you know, drawing and writing again. And uh, that's, that's so what, what I can do. What was it like launching the, the biggest Netflix TV series of quarantine while you were in quarantine? Uh, was well, it, and, and how different, you know, Umbrella season one was huge and it sounds like season two was huger, uh, which is what the numbers are talking about so far. What was this entire experience been like, both when you could go around the world and be a part of it, and then when you could go from your kitchen to your bedroom and be a part of it? Yeah, I think that's the biggest difference because the numbers are so absurd. I can't really grasp the success of the series. It's something that I would never be able to touch. There, there won't be enough memes and stuff on, on, on the internet to show me how successful the, the show is but uh, but yeah I'm at home and I like can't if you if you if you release a TV show that 150 million people watch in a week uh, but you never leave your house did the show actually come out I don't know yeah you know that's that's the mysteries of life uh, Tula, but, speaking of by the way Tallulah has a lot of questions for you so great buckle up She's, yeah <laughs> Yeah. No, I love that's that's the only I think connection I really have with the, the, the reach of the series because my friends watch it. My friends who by the way don't read the comics. <laughs> <laughs> and and their kids watch it. So I have family They're waiting for the they're waiting for the trade. They're going to get the collection. They're waiting for the collection. Yeah, yeah. So they <laughs> they watch it and they have questions and it's it it was it was fun when I, I went to like birthdays of my friends and you saw their their children coming at me a little shy just to pour over hundreds of questions of umbrella academy mm -hmm. and um so that that's the fun part of it that didn't that never happened with the comics. Um, even some of my friends read our comics. Uh, it was not. It was never this reaction. You know, you can't really, you can't deny the the power of uh, TV of yeah. of uh, this media. So that's that's the only contact I have with with the audience for real. Everything else is just numbers. I can't really, yeah, you know, understand, but I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. Yeah. Not, not because of how many people watched it or anything, but just because I think it's really well done and, and uh, well written, well, well produced. And, the uh, casting is is dead on too. Like they found such a great core of actors, and like it honors the comic, right? But it yeah. is its own thing. You know, it finds its own space as a TV show, and it's it's like it's amazing. It's yeah. And I couldn't get my kids to watch it until Netflix began to suggest it to Tallulah. That's what got her to watch it. Uh, but like anything, I try to put in front of them, like they're not. I have to kind of not share things that I'm into to hope that that interests <laughs> them. Cause if I try to put something in front of them, they're like, ah, I'll get to it. But, uh, but yeah, once, once the algorithm started to suggest it to her, she was like, Oh, maybe I'll try this. So that was, uh, that was the only thing that did it. The algorithm. All, all the algorithm. The algorithm. Yeah. We need that for comics algorithm. Yeah. Yeah. I want to, I, hmm. we can't talk about the thing you're working on although I want to, so I'm going to talk about it without naming it, but in all the stuff I wanted to talk to you about, both of you guys were about the pieces that you've worked on together. Uh, um, um, so before you kind of dive into that, like, just tell me how you work 
as a team because like it was starting from day tripper you the two of you were maybe even predating day tripper i'd have to go look but when you work together you simply go as the two of you there's no written by story you know pencils by inks by as a as a a, a comics unit walk me through how you guys work even especially with writing like i i have said hundreds of times that 20 minutes into our you know kind of earliest days on Casanova, I realized, oh, you guys don't need writers. You, you, they're, there's no, you. So I'm curious, how do you write with each other? How do you write for each other? Tell me how you go from having an idea to having a book, having a page, having a fucking panel even. Um, um, and how you uh, synthesize with one another and all that kind of stuff. I'm just kind of fascinated by how that works. Uh, well, uh, I think uh, in the beginning of our careers, uh, I had this impression that we were we had ideas of comics that we wanted to do, and in the very beginning, most of them were drawn by Ba because he had he had developed his artistic size side better than me in the beginning so our first stories he would draw and no matter who was writing or we would already come up with a story and develop the story thinking that he would draw and but then uh, uh, but then eventually I think I learned how to draw or I got better I got better enough that I wanted to draw the stories I was thinking about and my brother wanted to write stories for me to draw and but it's it's very weird when you're working on the same uh, on the same space it, it feels like a game and you're just writing down ideas and then you show the other and then it, it's this back and forth so writing has always been this back and forth between writing a piece of text, which mostly is like a dialogue exchange and trying to come up together of a way to break that down into images or uh, coming up alone with a sequence of images and trying to break down together how to fill those panels with dialogue, trying to complement a page without dialogue with dialogue afterwards and and nowadays i think we mostly have tried to uh, to break out the story together the most that we can and think of which part of which story uh, who is going to draw and then we let like the parts of a story that I'm going to draw, I'm in charge of doing the heavy lifting on the writing as well. So it, it, it becomes, ah, I'm drawing that, so I'm writing that. He's drawing that, so he's writing that. And this is how we've been uh, dividing the work when we're working together. But at the same time, I think in part, because of stuff that uh, we learn from Ba's experience with Umbrella Academy, seeing all this writer's room and the idea of the showrunner and the idea of uh, there's this, somebody is, is in charge of making everything be consistent, right, which for right. us is the, the most important stuff is to be consistent. So that's why- That's why we don't divide and don't yeah. say written by or art by. It doesn't really matter. So, no. but uh, yeah, you know, just like Fabio said, we um, we used to write more visually in the beginning. So we mm -hmm. we used to create sequences of narrative and then fill out the texts because we knew what was going on and what was being said by talking to each other and 
our I think our first stories were more uh, um, light on text, so the dialogues were more more direct and more uh, you know you, we use we used to choose our words very closely, but we would you, we wouldn't say a lot on the pages because they were very visual. So uh, as time progressed and we, we, we worked on more, more projects and with other writers, you included, uh, we learned that we could fit in more writing on the pages. Uh, yeah, especially learning, especially with Casanova, yeah. especially like the beginning of Casanova. Yeah. Those complex dialogues, you know, yeah. complex dialogues and, you know, more interaction. And uh, it's, it's funny, it, you, you guys have gotten more wordy and I've gotten less. Yes. <laughs> But that's that's what that did for us is is what Fabio said, like, it's easier for us to try to write the pages we are going to draw because even though we have a lot of the same background, the same influences, the same storytelling style, we do have our differences and our strengths. And sometimes Just taste, I would, I would imagine taste, right? Just taste, I like these kinds of things. Well, in yeah. And, and, and sometimes the way I lay out a page is not the best for Fabio. Right. So it's better if he layouts his pages. So if he's going to lay out his pages, it's best if he writes what's in them. So that's how we're dividing the work now. Um, because this new project, unlike most of our recent projects, we're both writing and drawing. Like our two last, three last big projects Uh, Day Tripper, Two Brothers, How to Talk to Girls at Parties. It was only one of us drawing. Hmm. So now we're, both of us are drawing. So we are trying to put that out as well. Something that we did in the beginning of our career more often. And now we're trying to do it here just because we, we need a challenge again. And it's going to be fun. Um, when you guys were out here last fall, fall, I think, and we were uh, uh, looking at the, you kind of do, um, it's almost like an entire text version. Uh, uh, I don't mean, and I mean this differently than a script, but like you kind of block the panels out in text where there's a, a kind of describing what's happening and then kind of sample dialogue fit into rough frames. It's this sort of uh, uh, paragraphs uh, uh, artfully designed to suggest where, uh, where, where the pages are going. Do you, um, how locked in to your, your scripts are you before you start drawing? Or is it a kind of, you, you, do you leave yourself room to explore scenes as you go? Or by the time you're putting, by the time you're drawing, do you know it's this many pages, it's this, it's this panels on this page, like how locked into it are you? Do you, do you discover things? Uh, I guess what I'm asking is, do the artist Ba and Moon find things that are surprising in spite of writer Ba and writer Moon being the same people? Uh, that makes sense. I think, I think we like um, knowing, having it written before, having, you know, have everything written. So we know what, what's being said, what's the space that we need for that text. And uh, because that, that affects all the, the choices that we make in, uh, on composition of the panels, on the amount of details we have on the art, just to you know, not draw attention away from the, what's being said. And yeah, very rarely something changes uh, on, on, on our scripts after we draw before we draw we we kind of we have to be happy with the script sometimes we tweak a little word right. or two but it's it's so much less 
than what we've seen change in a regular comic after when, when there's a, a writer and an artist they change so much like the, the script can change so much after the pages comic, are drawn yeah and when you when you get your comic and suddenly there's a balloon that was not on the script yeah that doesn't really happen with us right. uh, but we can we can have these sort of ideas while we are drawing uh, sometimes because yeah. sometimes we have to fight yeah sometimes we have to fight the urge. the idea to redraw like the same way we fight these ideas to rewrite the script we have to fight the ideas to redraw pages like ah we are on the third chapter but now i i came up with a better way to go back to the first chapter we try to avoid that as well but it For us, it's like the same. Uh, the, the words we choose, they're as precise uh, and precious as the images that we draw. So, so we, we try to look at them the same way and, and, and we try not to change a lot. So we try to think of everything in pieces, but at the same time, we try to think of it in the whole so we know of what we have and what we need to change has to be changed while it's being made and I don't know if that made sense sure sure no totally totally um uh, so how does that work when you're doing something like two brothers and you're uh doing an adaptation of a novel uh we we kind of had to write it all before we started drawing yeah uh yeah just to make it work, to see it through and see that it would work and how long it would be because we, we, we had no idea how long it would be uh, before we, we, we drew layouts with text of everything. But uh, strangely enough, we had, we spent four years working on that book and After two years trying to come up with a, a way of writing the script and then trying full scripts and then trying layouts with text, we finally got to a way we were happy with. But after two years of not drawing anything, we were getting crazy. So yeah. you, you have yeah. to, like, you're adapting stuff, you have to read read it so many times that it feels like you're creating. You have to read it as much and think about what you're reading to see if you can understand what the writer was thinking while he was reading. So you can understand the subtext and you have to search for all the subtext so you can try to include some of the stuff which is not on the writing. You can include that on the images. Right, right. So that, did you, how, how much latitude did you have from the author? I mean, to explore and to kind of discover that stuff. And did you guys see things that, that, that he didn't, did you find things that maybe weren't intended, but he encouraged you to, to, to bring out or was he resistant to stuff like that? No, I, I, we had, uh, we had a few meetings with him uh, when we were starting the project and when we were starting to create the visuals for the for the stories and his input on some characters and Zana spe specifically the, the mother was very important to us because that's that's the kind of inside information that we didn't really have on the book but once he said it out loud it was clear to us oh yes of course this is the character that's that he's he's written so um but after that he just gave us uh full liberty to to work and to make our own decisions and and we we are the kind of people who try to do as faithful as an adaptation as as we can and faithful to the the originals strengths as as the language and the story and the, the challenges and how can we 
bring that into comics. So that's what we really try to do, uh, explore a lot of silent, silent scenes as well, because silence is something that we can work so well in comics. And so he was, he was really happy with the result because the, the city that we portray nowadays doesn't look like that. So it's kind of, kind of like a, um, you know, trip to, to the past for him to see our efforts to portray the city the way he, he described it, the, the way he remembers it. And um, because nowadays it's all changed. It's, it's funny that they made a, a TV miniseries out of that book as well. It was released a year after our book. It was being done at the same time and we were, we were afraid it would be released at the same time. But um, thankfully we were faster. But they had a lot more, they had more trouble trying to, you know, rebuild that city at that time sure, sure, than we sure. did because we can draw it, you know, we can draw anything. Uh, so they had to shoot on, you know, on a set and maybe try on, on a different city because they couldn't find the locations on the actual city anymore. But uh, yeah, it was, it was a great, great project, uh, very fulfilling and very challenging. Uh, and and the, the, the author is like one of the biggest uh, authors of in, like contemporary fiction in Brazil. Like it was not a small project. It was not <laughs> like, like there are a lot of eyes on it. There's a lot of attention on it. It was a, it was a, yeah, no, it, it, yeah. he's probably the biggest uh, contemporary uh, Brazilian writer and yeah. it's his most uh, acclaimed That's book. Cool. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, so I, I guess we're, we're almost out of time. So tell me about the play that was based on your work and tell me, what you liked working, how was that experience? What did you like about it? What, what worked, what didn't, how did uh, that, that whole kind of, it was a really fascinating time to be talking to you guys, to see this, you growing into this kind of new space. Uh, uh, um, tell me about it some, because I bet most folks don't know about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, we, we actually wrote the play. It was not adapted from like a story we did we wrote it to be a play and it, we were invited by the, the main actress. She wanted to do a play which had Kung Fu because she practiced Kung Fu and she thought, ah, Kung Fu, comics, everything together. Sure. So, so she invited us to write it. But then one, one day we went out to lunch and she was telling about her past experiences being involved in a very, uh, in a religious cult and, and how that was traumatizing and how she came out of it. And she kind of wanted to put something about that into the story as well. And that was so much more interesting than just having characters fighting on stage. So we incorporated a lot of that and we actually created this play, which is set in a dystopian world. And, and right now it feels so, so, so I, I don't know, it feels like we are writing about now mm. with where people are all isolated and they have this feeling the world is over and they are divided into these tribes that don't know each other and they, they as they meet, they fight each other. One is controlled by this religious cult leader. The other one is controlled by a politician slash dictator. So it, it, it feels very modern. And, and we wrote this story. And, but then the director tried to incorporate as much of the comics language as he could 
and they had this idea, this very different idea about the sets of the play, which which was actually what made it a real spectacle, which they didn't have a set. They had two screens, one in front of the actors and one behind the actors, and they would project uh, drawings, like drawn sets and drawn characters and drawn elements. Uh, on effects and... Yeah, on, on both the, the screens. And so the, the actors were interacting with the, the drawings and as well on the screens, they, put, they could put chapter titles and subtitles and balloons and stuff like that. So it really uh, looked more like a comic book and the, the, the drawings, they were animated. So they move and the, the actors were choreographed to move along with the drawings. So it looked like you were seeing a 3D movie on stage, which was very, it was very impressive. Uh, the, the guy, the, one of the Umbrella producers was here at the end of the year when the play was showing. And he was impressed of just the sheer spectacle side of it. And, and that with all this uh, Kung Fu fighting and the soundtrack was amazing. It, it's so awesome to create something that has a soundtrack. It's the only real thing missing in comics. It's soundtrack, it's sound music. And so having to write a story that had uh, a soundtrack was so cool and and it's very strange to see that 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 side of a story which only happens on theater and plays where the same story is performed over and over for four months four times a week and every day is a little different sure. and you I, like i watched six or seven times and every time i learn a little a little thing about the story that I didn't notice before, something that I didn't know if it was going to work or not, and something that I realized, ah, that's a choice of the director, or how the actors would change their performances a little bit to keep it interesting to themselves. So, and, and then, like everything else we do, the stories we tell, all the feedback from the audience and people seeing the play and discovering our work or people who liked our comics discovering the play that was really nice really new experience and so it was just another layer of discovery in this recent part of our careers where we're still passionate about comics but Ba has the TV show and then we did the play and now we're interacting with all these different ways to tell stories and interact with people and engage people, which I think it's nice. You guys, this uh, was great. It was good to see uh, you both. And thank you uh, for making time. It is, I'm uh, really excited to be uh, a part of CXC again and not be vomiting off in the wings. Uh, so this is cool <laughs> for me. Um, all right. Let's, uh, uh, thanks everybody. Yeah, it was our pleasure to yeah. finally be part of CXC, yes. Yeah.